All right, everybody, today we're gonna to take a look at the uh, parts of an outboard engine. Um, before we get started, though, a couple of things that you need to think about is what sort of fuel does your engine take? And uh, these small outboards that we have right here that are fairly old, I think this one is a 93 or a 94, most of this vintage actually takes uh, a two-stroke um, fuel. So that means um, over there we've got our 50 to one mix so, um, and you would label it right, right on the top, um, mixed 50 to one. So that's 50 parts of um, regular gasoline and one part of oil. And so that's a special fuel that you have to mix up. So all two stroke engines, it's just like a chainsaw or a weed eater, right? Um, usually the older the engine is, the more likely it is that it's a two stroke. Um, some of the newer engines that we have with the electric fishing boat, um, are four-stroke engines and they're just like the engine in your car, right? Uh, you put oil in them just like you would the engine in your car. So that's the first thing. Figure out what fuel it is and this is a 50 to 1 uh, just like my chainsaw. Some other parts of the engine that you're going to want to have familiarity with. This is the tiller, right? And um, this tiller is interesting because the, the uh, shifter is actually directly engaged with um, the, the throttle. So this would be putting it in gear, right? There's neutral. There's a little indicator right there. This would be going forward and the more you turn it, the faster you go. Coming back here to neutral, this is reverse. The more you turn it, the faster you go. So also you want to figure out, right, how do I shift this thing? Now here's an older outboard over here. Um, and you may get into a situation where you need this. This has the tiller, right, which is the throttle. This is the throttle, but this is the shifter, right? So this is just laying on the ground here right now, but this would be forward, and that would be neutral, and that would be reverse. So you have to realize what sort of shifting mechanism that you have, because you actually may need to engage the shifting lever on the side where this one is all built in. Also on the end of this tiller, right, we also have a kill switch. So when we want to stop the engine, you push the button here and this grounds out the spark and it will shut the engine off. The other off on these is the lanyard kill switch or the dead man. And uh, take a look over here. We've got two positions here. We've got a run, right, and then an off. So the thinking is, is that when you're driving along, you have this on your wrist so that if you hit a big wave or something and you fly off the boat then it will pull the kill switch and the engine will stop and not run you over and have a bad problem um, also on this engine right we've got the pull cord and we've got a, uh, uh, a choke pull that out for choke and push it in for run and then this is an idle adjustment slow idle or fast idle and right now we've got this set up on fast idle um, some other parts of the engine that you really want to be concerned with, right? Um, we've got the prop, which this is our outboard, so it's all beat up. Um, this is the whole thing down here is called the lower unit, and it's filled with lower unit oil. And then right under here, you want to pay attention to this. This is where your intake is for your water pump, okay? So if this gets clogged with a leaf, and this one's damaged already, which is bad, um, Basically, there's a little screen down here. This is where the engine gets sucked up. Uh, the water gets sucked up and will come out up here. So this is the port where the water will come out. And you'll see what I mean in just a second. Um, if you want to take the cowl off, basically what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to come back here. And this part's the cowl up here, right? You're going to have to undo this latch. Grab here, pull, and then pop it off like that. And then you can see all the insides of the engine. Here's what you should know about most outboards. If it got you out there, chances are it will get you back. If something changes, usually it's fuel, okay? So you're not going to go away from the dock with, a, with an engine that's running crappy. You just shouldn't do it, right? So chances are if it got you out there, it'll get you back. Back here, we have the spark plugs, right? Spark plugs right there. Uh, spark plug wrench will fit right on that. This is a two cylinder engine, one, two. Um, and you should always carry spare spark plugs with you and a spark plug wrench. Um, some other things inside here. Once we start it up, I'll show you um, 
with an engine like this, you can manually adjust the throttle with this. This is the gear selector over here. But most of the stuff inside of here, um, you're probably, unless you're a mechanic, you're not gonna tinker around too much with. Okay, so we're getting ready to start our engine up. We've got it in, um, uh, we've got it in a barrel uh, full of water, making sure that the, um, the cavitation plate or the anti-cavitation plate is in the water because remember our intake is under the water. We always want to have this in the water before we start it up. You should never have your engine started outside of the water, no matter what. Um, we've got our gas hooked up. Um, basically this is how the gas hooks up, right? Um, this little latch right here will face usually the larger of the two prongs, right? We've got a prong here, prong here. Basically what you want to do is hook that up. You want to come down here to the primer bulb, make sure the primer bulb is firm. Um, you really shouldn't have to crank a couple of, couple of um, squeezes is enough, right? And then we want to go uh, and make sure that our lanyard kill switch, taking it from this one, we're going to make sure that that's on, right? On the run position. And then this has already been started once, so it's warm. We shouldn't have to do too much to it. My um, shifting lever is in neutral. That's where you always want to start it, right? And now all we should have to do is give it a pull. Okay. So it's running now. And what I want to do is just to make sure everything is working, I'm going to make sure my prop is clear. And it is. I'm just going to gauge it and see where we are. Okay, it's working good. We'll put it in reverse working good and uh, since this doesn't have an external idle adjustment with the big motor over there all I have to do is turn the idle now what I'm going to do back here is I'm just going to make sure I can rev it up a little bit and make sure it's working again I'm taking a look down here and making sure there's some water coming out not that much water coming out there um, should be a little more than that and it's coming a little bit more Get a little more over the course of uh, the next couple of minutes, I hope. So let's make sure our kill switches work. The right kill switch at the end of the tiller works just fine. I let that go. Probably start it up again. Here's my um, uh, throttle. Right. I want to make sure that my lanyard kill switch works, and it does. So the motor is working okay. I would like to see a little bit more water coming out of that before I actually take this thing in the field. There it is, Eureka. That's what it should look like. Okay, everybody, before you hook up your trailer to your truck, you definitely want to make sure you have the right ball. Uh, so this, um, this tongue is for a two inch ball. It's a class two hitch, maximum rating of 3,500 pounds, maximum tongue weight of 300 pounds. So basically, you know, if you want to grab it right there, that's probably about lifting like a hundred pounds. So you don't want to exceed what the maximum tongue weight is on the hitch itself. So this is a two inch ball. Make sure you don't screw it up with an inch and seven eighths ball or a two and five sixteenths ball. Two inch ball, that's it for this one. So we're back here um, with the plaque um, on our John boat. Um, all boats have to have this on them. Uh, this boat is rated for seven persons or 987 pounds, okay? Um, and a 75 horsepower motor and uh, 1,412 pounds of persons, motor, and gear. So really you need to know the weight of your motor and you need to know the weight of the gear and the people that you have in the boat. So maximum that this whole operation can hold 1,400 pounds. And then we wanna make sure we don't exceed the horsepower. This is a 25 horsepower four stroke. So we should be good.